Are you the biggest CSGO fan? Then look out for the DHL Drop Quiz and show off your incredible CSGO knowledge. Reply with the right answer in Twitch chat and track your position on our live leaderboard. Will you make it to the top and win the 1,000 euro prize? Hashtag Gamers Unite. Still be on my feet, forget all of my fears Cause I know my destiny, I feel a champion Waking inside of me series goes to FaZe Clan at the start of things. Mirage, the first map of the series, and it's going their way. Nice to see FaZe Clan dusting themselves off and starting with a bang against none other than the heroic Danes. Quick reminder about this DHL giveaway. We are doing it. We've got lots of goodies in here. There's a question that you've got to answer. It's really simple. I don't know what else that specifically is in here. Where is it? I'm, not sure. well, I'm not going to show everything. I'm just seeing. Mm. Oh, okay. There's some goodies. That is a processor, a film description, that hexagon looking thing. Oh, we've seen those. I've seen those before. They're all in the graphics and stuff. There's so yeah, in there. I've seen one of them. If you want to win, well. if you want to win, you can do that. Nice and easy is a question. It will appear at some point during, I think it's supposed to appear now, actually, at the end of map one of the second <laughs> series. I'm pretty sure that's when it happens. But regardless, guys, I've got Pansy and Chad hanging out with myself, Machine. And Hi. Uh, we're here yeah. to analyze the game we just talked about. So uh, that game yeah. right there, there's something that was difficult to note while all that action was going on down. And that was the fact that the opening kills in that second half, there was only one of them found by Heroic on their T side. Now, as we know, the T's entries are good because it makes take, making the bomb sites easier. Entry forces good. the CTs <laughs> to rotate around a bit more, right? Well, they were only able to get one. And that was on that second round where they dropped those AKs across 
fast and they had that very fast approach into that A site. It was Stown getting that opening and then he kind of pushed forward into spawn. It was either him or the other AK player who picked it on up and they got taken out. And I was like, oh, I felt like they threw that one away a little bit. And then as the game continued, Nico and Brokey were hyper aggressive in a lot of different situations, pushing up middle. Yeah, Brokey with the orb. They were able to get themselves a lot of different picks across the map right there. And uh, all in all, I think uh, FaZe coming out the gate here, I said that they need to, to get something done. And while a win right now is good against the Heroic, if they're able to pick up the series, they'll even have three series wins in a row. So uh, maybe, the, maybe the tune of yeah. uh, FaZe is changing a little bit. Maybe. I, I would like to look at Brokey. Now, obviously, the sure. Deagle was the first thing we were, you know, making yeah. a bit of a meme of it. But further into this half, he did eventually get that all. And that kind of was the catalyst to a great deal of rounds coming back for them. And, and Brokey is just... It seems like he constantly, constantly impresses me with the way he plays. And obviously that presence then carried over to the CT side. Now, I think you highlighted, Alex, you know, the young blood really pumping through the body at the moment of phase, really keeping them somewhat alive in this, it feels. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. The fact that Brokey is the most reliable, dependable fragger on the team is a problem. I don't think that should be the case. Yeah, I mean, sure, yeah. like it's never going to be a problem that he's performing, but the problem is that he is the one that's standing out. Yeah, and I think here if we look at Brokey, right, what's even more wild about this? situation is at the start of the year when they had him in the team they had him doing Olaf roles and Olaf was doing the primary orping and then they shifted things around and then Brokey showed him <sighs> to be very very handy with that AWP um, so just with those opening kill stats that I was talking about the game ended Nico was 5-0 and with 8 multi kills and Brokey was 7-1 and so what that means for people is Nico was invo involved in 5 opening duels he won them all and then you had yeah. Brokey involved in 8 and he won 7 out of those 8 that's very good as well 7 multi kills for him both of those two uh, performing in a big way here Love that aggression towards middle as well. Him with the AWP running up mid on the CT side, Nico just like taking mad fights. Like I find that fun. And if, if this, if we see AWPing presence and it carries through to train, I'm excited. Did we see a switch up in positioning for Kirby? We saw a bit of a weird roll maybe on the T side. Yeah, on the CT side. He was over the towards same, B right? and you had Cold Zero going for that anchor yeah. more over towards the apartments. But they were chopping and changing, I think, mm. depending on the weapons or the situations that they were rocking with there. Uh, but if we can also, we were talking about, you know, Heroic not getting any openings on their T side. I'm not sure whether to put that down to the uh, aggressive style or at least phase dictating the pace of the game on their CT side or Heroic not doing a good enough job of isolating those jewels because Kadian, who is the primary AWPer for the team, he went zero and five in terms of opening jewels. And then you had Stown, who is normally the star for the team. He went three and six. So yeah. uh, if they were able to find a couple more openings, especially the Orpa, then they may be able to capitalize on top of this. But we do have Train coming up next. It is the map pick of Heroic. And I think it's more of a punish because we've only seen FaZe with Kyoby play this twice. And both times, I'm pretty sure, were single digit losses. Okay. So going into a map like Train, we start to get a little bit worried for FaZe. But I think if they knew it was coming, maybe uh, they can win it. Maybe they can 2-0. Maybe. It's certainly other realms of possibility. I talked to you about that quite DHL drops, so here's the question. It's going to appear over here. Magic. Which Brazilian player was voted the number one player in the world by HLTV two years in a row, 2016 and 2017? Fallen, Cold, Fair, and K Serato. I think you can work that one out. That's not too challenging, and you can win that box. So you go answer it in. Just go ahead and type DHL drop with an exclamation mark plus ABCD in the chat. You can judge people for their answers and all that good stuff. And we'll be right back with Map 2 Second Series in a mo. My name is Trace Sarantis. I am building a PC for Jordan Gilbert. My goal was really to get something that was no compromise, super powerful, and uh, ideally not built by Trace. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Jordan Gilbert. You know, we don't make mistakes around here. We made happy accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I get a booster seat here. Enter now for a chance to win one of three PCs built by me, Jason, or Trace. Ready? Huh? Hey, boy, huh? You ready? Huh? Ah! Start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com.
just want to be someone and never fall behind again just keep on moving on never look down never fade out never fade out Intel Extreme Masters New York Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, AT&T, U.S. Air Force, and GG Bet. Online, we're back in business. Second map, it is time to see what Heroic can do on their map pick and whether FaZe can continue to impress. We asked you before the break a question you were answering in the chat. It was which Brazilian player is voted number one player in the world HRTV or two years in a row? 2016 and 2017, the answer was called Zera. Congratulations if you got that right. You can get one of these goodie boxes that's by my feet. But regardless, I've got Chad Sponge Birchill and Lauren Pansy Scott hanging out with me, machine here at the desk. We can talk a little bit about this game before we get into it. What is the map, Chad? Yeah, the map is going to be train, and that's Heroic's <laughs> choice. Now, one of the notes here I want to make is the uh, train for FaZe hasn't looked great. They've lost to MIBR and Astralis, single-digit losses. Uh, that was with Kyirby. Now, they've had two weeks to refine this. Maybe it's going to look better today. Uh, but one of the notes here with Heroic picking this map, they've actually lost this two times in a row as well, both of them Pro League, once to Godsent and once to Na'Vi. And also, if we're going to continue to build on the woes right now for Heroic, I was just scrolling back through this five, this five that we've seen in the last couple of events. They actually uh, have never been on a losing streak this bad. So they lost 2-0 to Na'Vi in the upper bracket final. They lost 2-0 to Astralis, and now they've lost a fifth map in a row to this phase today. You're saying it's possible. 
Well, it, uh, yeah, potentially. I was just looking at the fact that they've never lost five maps in a row with this roster before. So uh, they're on a losing streak. They so could lose again. Does the downward spiral continue or do they turn it around here? Do they kick this losing streak? Do they get rid of the L's and the red in the column next to them? And do they take us forward to map number three? Um, but I would say a few key elements going into a map like Train. Once again, I'm not going to be looking too much about what Heroic are bringing. I'm going to be looking at what FaZe are bringing. I want to see where is Kirby? Have they stuck with him towards that inner bomb side? Do they think this is going to fit? Do they think that they can make it work? And if they do, does he get tested? And does he pass that test? Brokey on the AWP, we already know he's playing well. Um, Nico's going to have a very important job up close towards main and Pop Dog patrolling those areas alongside of Rain. And then Cold Zero, well, he's always playing over towards Ivy, right? He's been doing that through you know, his entire career. And when he was the MVP, as per that DHL poll result we had right there. Um, That's where he was? Yeah, he was playing that part of the map, right? And Train, at one point, I think it was more like 2017, was one of the best maps for SK. So uh, that's just some history for everybody playing yeah. at home. Yeah, Thank no, you. it's yeah. good history. Of course, called Zera, I really have lost my uh, my penchant for him. I, I need to be, uh, Devin, I need to wooed. see, yeah, wooed. I'm really just kind of bored of it. You know, oh. it needs to see a bit more life out of the Cold Zera machine. It's such a big name. And yet the last two years, it's been kind of muttered in the past, more reflecting on what he has achieved as opposed to what he's achieving. It is. About time we saw that phase plan a chance to knock Heroic into the lower bracket. It starts here on train. Opening kill is important for Heroic here as well as they really struggled on their T-half of Mirage to do exactly that. So let's get underway. Utility for Cold and Kirby is spotting on up out towards Olaf will go bow up and uh, Nico, he'll take down bow up in those early stages. So another opening going awry. I'm worried about the mental with these guys and I'm glad you've highlighted everything coming into this. I do wonder if this loss streak does weigh a little heavier on them, but that's that's so early now, but we can probably see if it continues. Rain gonna make light work of Tessus as the bomb is heading towards B, so that actually could get a plant from this at this point. Uh, Cold Zera is gonna be keeping track of that as Rain looks set for another. Nothing nice. clean about it, nothing pretty. Oh, oh God, wait, how? How did Kirby and Nico just die? They're on the wrong place here, so... Uh... Cold Zero and Brokey have been sold. A rough one right now as Nico will rotate back towards that inner site. Cold, you can't hear the bomb ticking, my friend. Uh, it's on the other side of the map. What a turnaround. It looks so good for FaZe Clan opening kills, all of that good stuff, but just walking in and exploiting that gap. Cold forced to rotate into the wrong site. They don't have a kit, and so this one gets very difficult, and it's likely Brokey's going to catch a bullet here, and he does. Nice, precise headshot. That's the end of that. Oh. Thank you for coming, Cold Zara. Got the nade off at least, but only a tiny bit of damage done to Cadian there. And Heroic, that will post the pistol round on the board here. Having to deal with what will most likely be the force bite of FaZe Clan. We might see some scouts come out, some deagles as well. I think on the CT side of a map like this, if you can have one or two scouts up, you're able to find a bit of peppering of damage and then have the deagles and those lighter pistols finishing off the remainder of the players. It is a recipe for success due to those ranges. But on the other side of things, you'll see Cadian with actually no utility behind the MAC-10. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, Stown there with no utility behind that AK. So looks like it will oh. just be an inner play. They're heading straight over here with intent. And it's actually Cold Zero immediately over towards the B side of things. So this is going to be curious. Let's see if it sticks. Kirby is over by Ivy right now. And well, again... We're looking at FaZe with new eyes. Clearly working things out themselves. And uh, Rush, if you don't mind checking on those server conditions in a bit, mate, I'd appreciate that. Check have a talk to the text, Rush. Come yeah, on, mate. Have a, have a chat. We do have the B-Lean <sighs> considered. Brokey's over here and so is Cold. Now, it's not all of them by any means. Cold trying to focus towards the higher side of things, and he's done very well at that. They can't trade this back, and now there's a bit of a problem. Nico's still here in the bomb... It feels uncomfortable to go for the plants. If Cold converts that, oh. it would have been game on. But Nico's done well to find Cadian, so this is not outside of the realm of possibility. Yeah, they're hitting their shots. Fantastic oh. work from Stown, though. He actually controls the spray for both. And now a tag from Nico's scout. It's not going to finish off the round just yet. Two on two. FaZe Clan only scouts for the retake. Roki close quarters, and he's gone down. Stown has just dug them out of a hole, dug them out of an early grave. Nice shot from Nico. He's on three. He would need a fourth. And in fact, Stown is low enough that what single scout bullet would be sufficient. He's hoping that Stown will jiggle for info. And Nico thinks he's deep. He thinks he's on a fake off. it, confirms yeah. it, and Stown saving the day for Heroic. What a round that is. Four frags and phase full flat. That was a full investment. Oh, very dicey there. And I think off the bat, if we are learning that Cold Zero will be playing that inner bomb site, I don't mind that change whatsoever. 
I think uh, changing some stuff up with Cold Zero could potentially even reinvigorate some of that form that you feel you've been lacking there, Alex. It would be nice to see him playing somewhere new, seeing if he can offer up a bit of flair to the other side of the map. And here is uh, Stown planting the bomb. One of my highlights of that round right there as well as... <laughs> And number three gets back underway. It will just be the pistols. Nico on a deagle. Rain with the P250. And a bunch of usps for the other three. Getting the pace. Look at that go. I like it for the in-game leader. Yeah. Means your teammates have to follow you. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't like that. Really could do without that. Brokey does go down. Rush. What's going on, mate? What's happening? So it's just going to be a bug on our side, just specking. Uh, the players don't see it, but yeah, we're, it'll sadly be for the map. Why? Uh, looking at the conditions, they are good, but there's a slight cloud overhead, and it's mm. just a, a bit of rain uh, falling on the floor. Rain's not, causing it? Not okay. rain. Not rain himself. I'm oh. talking about the weather uh, condition <laughs> of the water falling from the sky. I uh, see. I was yes. going to say we could have got league ops on that if there was a bit of a problem there. So uh, look, <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, put up with it, Rush, but we want you to do your yeah. best to fix this. Is all right, get underway with the first gun round. Orbs out. Smokes toward five and E-box. Very standard opening. Bow up throwing that. Okay, Ooh. that was quick. Yeah, look for the trade. It's there. Bow up's good for one. Instantly expects the response. There was a player there, didn't respond in kind. Oh, that molly's perfect. That's going to give a bit of space for Nico, even though he's comped a lot of damage there. Down to 34. More smokes to follow through. The second wave from Heroic to attack this outer bomb site. Good shots. Barb's done a lot of work here with this 3 HP as well as he finds Rain's head. Two towards the back tracks. Kirby, Brokey, and Cold Sarah. And that's a third. Barb's making this low HP sing, continuing to find impact. It's Kirby trying to find his oh. first. He finds his first and his second in quick succession. And that's the end of that phase. We'll find their first and all recovered as well for Brokey, so no complaints there. And Kirby recovering the org as well. Yeah, the wiggle on the org. Apparently, it's uh, a specialty for Kirby here. He rocked it over there on Mirage, doing so here within the early stages of train. And it's a big round to pick on up, considering all that work that Borup did. Just crouching in the yard like a bit of a madman there. But the buy will come back on through for Heroic. Orp out for Katie and AKs for Nico, Borup, and Tessas. Just a deagle for Stown here. Not really much utility to work with. So they might have to get an opening pick before they can start playing with any of these rotations of phase. And over towards high ramp will be Nico on the bat. He's going to be in tow with Cold Zero. So it's definitely a position shift, and it's a great flash. A little bit of damage done. Nade just shy, but they're going to try and pressure the... Oh. Okay, Tessus. Okay, Nico's going to give it right back to him, but Nico stands his ground. He won't fall away. He finds three. The turret absolutely decimates them. Now they've both got the Danish one's capitalization, just to confuse things even further. So now they're all lowercase. Or up trying to make a case for heroic. Bombs loose down that B ramp, so... He does have the element of surprise here. He may catch Kirby. Oh, that's a shame. Just moonwalks into him. And so Cadian presented a one versus three. Far from obtainable. Spotted out. Oh, Nico beautiful. with his Danish capitalizations. That's going to bother me so much. That was a great round from Nico there. The fact that he stopped that and he was the spoiler towards Inner as well to deal with Cold Zero or to help out Cold Zero. Uh, I think some of the earlier woes, if you do chop and change the player you have as the Inner Bombsite Anchor, especially someone who hasn't necessarily done it before in the past, mm -hmm. what you can do to swat away teams from wanting to go towards that side of the map as a bit of a punish is exactly this, you know, bolster that defense. And we've seen in the past with teams, I remember when Zeus was on Na'Vi, they even tried him as the inner anchor on train for a little while there. And it just meant that Simple would lean over there early with the AWP, help him out, go, like, okay, well, I can be here too. So you can't just come to this side of the map. And uh, it forced teams to go for different approaches. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be putting Cold Zero in the same bucket as what I'd be putting a, a Zeus <laughs> sure. by any means. But uh, I'm just saying as a way to stop them from trying to bully that bomb site, you can always bolster it. And I do wonder if Heroic are aware of this change. You know, obviously during the practice time, yeah. have they actually played this version? Question. Are they aware of it yet? Because it's obviously a very different look. If they've geared themselves up going, well, we know Kierby's going to be on that B side. Let's hammer it home. And they've come across Cold Zero and Nico. That's a very different looking side. Now, Brokey is leaning over here now. Brought that orb right back around. So he's going to be sat in position, quite comfortable, supporting Cold, who's playing towards the lower. And they wait patiently. Cadian and Stown potentially trying to 
capitalize on any over rotation or maybe we we'll work out a bomb plant or simply put they're just gonna have a chat through this as well it's pretty wild to think that if kirby gets some of these ct positions and swapped over with cold zero on certain maps that makes sense they're more anchory roles and and i can understand why you'd want to do that and then on the tease side if he gets swapped around with say somebody like nico or rain mm. on some of these he's basically being gifted everything that he needs to function uh, at a high <laughs> level so other players in the team are having to to make space for kirby so he will need to deliver as we are down to 30 seconds. Heroic just waiting out any early utility. And they've done exactly that. You can see there's not too many nades left over. Brokey with smoke nade. He's got the most. Everyone else is just rocking flashes. Now the kills will come on in. Shouldn't be too many dramas. <laughs> Hopefully they get that walk back. Uh, CT's probably not happy at that loss. Oh, this is a classic play. Oh. In, a, in a stack and then uh, try and plant the bomb yard. But Rain, he's, uh, <laughs> he's had none of that. Yeah, he's well aware. And Nico will finish off Tessus there. Nope. So. Yeah. I do like the idea and concept as well as of, of Cold Zero being given a new challenge. Yeah. Because anchoring that B site is something that is, is a real specialist role. And for someone who's not done it, but who is a wonderful player, who's had that, you know, very, you know, able to deal with pressure no matter what. He's not a player that shies away from it. I love the concept of putting him back online, putting him in a new learning position, say, right, this is your task. You either get good at it or <laughs> you look silly, which is it, it does give a bit of motivation. Yeah, and I'd like to see him, you know, be a little bit more offensive in that position mm. than some of the defensive greats that we've seen do it, like Taco and Koba. Let's get back underway with round number seven. Kadian has to fight here. He's locked in towards Pop, and Nico, he's already taken out Bo up, so a little bit of a problem right there. Already down a man heroic. Kadian can get away. But, uh, they haven't been able to make any ground, and FaZe looking good on the start of round seven. Already down to just peanuts or utility, however. It's flashbangs. Maybe the heads up counter strike will suit them better here within the mid to late round as corralling back over towards B. And this is going to be the finish from Heroic. There's already been Brokey rotated on over to help out Cold. So this will be another test for Cold Zero. Let's see how he fares. Smokes go in. No intention just yet. Slow and quiet from Heroic. Very slow. And that's the first. Nico will not have a chance to enter this site, and no one will. Cold Zero reminding us what he's capable of there. Nice stuff from Cold. 3k spread around Heroic. They won't be able to do anything with this round. 3400 next, so Deagle's likely. We'll see this from Cold Zero's perspective as he just holds on that little lip. An extra sign of elevation, finishing things off neat and tidy. He's feeding himself. There we go. A little bit of tracking on it too. Very impressive. All right, so now Heroic, down four to three. Their map choice, T side, will be on the Deagle's. Need to find some inspiration here, and I'm not sure who it's going to come through because normally we talk about this team as everybody being able to deliver when the chips are down. Hasn't been a clear standout for them so far. Sound obviously in the early stages of train looking good. Now, Deagles, that's probably not something the Kirby wants to swing into anytime soon. Set up in a more passive defense this time round, our phase. You can see by looking at the radar, they're in more of a line across the back of the bomb over towards cutout ready to help ivy and this is so they don't give up any guns that the t's can pick up they're actually using the range of their weapons to their advantage this is basic stuff simple cs but you do love to see it and pushed up forward on the other side of things will be brokey higher with all that information so they're able to keep four players towards yard until brokey is pressured information game of counter-strike coming on through as we're going to see that back of ivy train smoke landing for bow up flash is going to come over the top and so will the attack How Kirby does in this. Now under a little bit more stress as he knows teammates have fallen. Handles it well. Two down. Comfy. Brokey holding firm. You're not <laughs> getting that bomb sneakily over there. They've seen this look before. These sneaky plants they're trying to get. But Borup going to take a couple of steps and see if he can maybe locate a, a scalp though that he could remove. There's one. There's two. Borup <laughs> now. Making things look a little spicier. He, I thought he was dead then, but Cold Zara lets him get away. Are they going to go for him after timer or are they just going to give him space? Because the bomb's down. Oh, hello. Uh, this is the kill towards B. I Let's suppose watch we're getting the replays back. a little bit early. I don't think Barrop like will be taking too this. much action. So, just yeah. See what happens with him. See what the CTs do as well. He survives cool. and so do they. So, uh, we're lucky with that one right there. We'll get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> no Reddit post today. <laughs> as uh, the scoreline will now go 5-3. to three. Barrop 
saving that across means that he won't have to invest. Also means he doesn't get the loss bonus, but he had enough residual cash working there to get the armor and the utility. So great shots here from Bora, but that's all they were, was some great shots. If we're going to consider the damage forward, it is to the CT-sided economy, but starting to build a little bit of bank, um, Brokey and Cold Zera, working with 5k plus on the both of them. Full buy will come out again. Interesting to note, Kirby doesn't fully invest here. No HE, no flash. Maybe he wants to go aggressive? Okay. Well, the thing is, Nico's already out. So, uh, Nico v Nico, Nico wins. Of course he does. <laughs> Wouldn't Actually, have had it any other way. Naturally. <laughs> Kirby's having a great round so far, or rather a great half. <clears throat> he's been locking down Ivy repeatedly, and he's going to try and Ooh. find another here. Kadian's playing with fire. He's holding the green tree. Yeah. Push. Timing is going to favor Kirby. Nice shots. Eighth frag found, a double kill here in the ninth as well. Borov can't do squat. They give it his good go. A couple of exit frags just to pad the stats. Only the one. Six to three, the score. FaZe Clan looking to lock down here on the defense. So that was just a small note, and maybe the players at home could use that for themselves. Because the intention from Kirby was to go aggressive Ivy off the bat, I noted there the utility that he had purchased, and that was just enough for him to go aggressive with. If he had died, he didn't want to give away some wasted, you know, utility. He maybe had a HE, maybe had a flash. That's 500 wasted dollars right there. So by not spending that, if worse comes to worse, he would be holding on to more money. It's not a lot, but every dollar counts in Counter-Strike, and especially now with the more pendulum swing. Ooh, we got some pace. Out main again. They're able to get this space, but they need to get the kills. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, we saw Borup use the Deagle well here, but that's been about it. I haven't seen much more come from it, but maybe Nico for phase falls foul. Wow. No, absolutely not. Combined with Brokey finding the other Nico for Heroic, it's looking very shut down. The amount of room the T's have is nothing, and it's been taken away. Another player gone down. There's Borup and Kadian. Oh, you got T spawn, kind of? <laughs> That's but it. Picks are just a real problem for wow. Heroic in, in both maps. So FaZe are more than happy to just stand and bang, you know. They're more than happy just to fight. And, and with that in mind, Heroic, they normally get away with so much confidence. Kadian just leaping into the jaws. Cold Zero picking up another. It's just one man remaining, and it's Borup. We've seen him last alive a few times. It's all consolation frags and stat padding. Sure, you know, it's good to do damage to that economy. Great. Maybe for your confidence is also a positive. But the rounds, they are quickly trickling away as this is going to be... Seven on the trot as Brokey finishes him off. That's going to be three on the round for Brokey. So everybody just playing well on FaZe Clan right now. They're obviously coming in with a new look. We preface that might be a possibility. It's good to see it. And while well, going forward, how many more are they able to get away with? Because they're keeping these rounds relatively clean, there's not too many kills coming in. It means that that money is starting to get to a really nice point. Everybody on that squad with 5k plus now. Sorry, Kirby has 4,700. So, Kirby, come on. Maybe save a little bit more. Uh, but Cold Zero and Brokey are rocking a lot of money, and it's just heroic down to the pistols. They're going straight towards a B-Rush. Respect. Cold Zera waiting. Lost oh. his life. Brokey does catch one. Won't be able to stop Tessus, and now we're unable to repeat. He tries and actually hits it. Damn. Good catch onto Borup. He's anticipating the push-up, and Tessus takes his life from him. So this is starting to shape up. Rain trying to save the day, but Tess is making things awkward. Quickly shut down by Nico. It's the long con from Kadian, and Nico seems to be aware of this. He's checking it, and that's the end of that. Nice, neat, and tidy phase. 17 frags from Nico. He's already got close to 20, just 10 rounds in on this first half. It certainly spells trouble for Heroic. They're all already closing in on max cash. Cold Zera's got 14k to spend, and yeah, it makes sense. Call a timeout, US Air Force. Tactical timeout called, and we'll be getting ready to see if Heroic have got anything left to show on this T-side. This is T-side train. I mean, we've yeah. seen many a lockout. We know it's certainly not out of the realms of possibility. Maybe they just have to play a little bit more late rounds. They're, they're going in for these, I don't want to say all lins, but they're trying to take space off of FaZe early. And FaZe are getting offered up jewels that are in their advantage because they're dropping the standard protocol utility. They're Molotoving off towards May and they're Molotoving off towards Olaf. They're dealing with these pop dog pushes with smoke grenades. And at that point, they're able to isolate the jewels. And when they isolate the fights, FaZe Clan are going toe to toe with Heroic, who have looked like some of the hottest prospects aim wise in recent times. So FaZe definitely. Riding a high of their uh, two series win to close out Pro League. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing as well to highlight is that Stown and Borup aren't necessarily having quiet games. No. It's just the, the kills don't particularly equate to round wins. They're just kind of filler kills here and there. So it's, again, young talent's in the right place, but I, I think we're seeing pound for pound a much better game from FaZe than I think any of us expected. Nico does take a lot of damage on his initial journey down pop, but he does keep his life for once. Normally that has 
filtered over towards phase and look at those opening kills now let's see who gets this he goes on the prowl looking for his 18th frag here in the 12th round of play bombs behind borup so had he found anything there the boost not going to net them a reward here. Katie will have to make noise on the dismount, but no one was close to hear it. Brokey set up for the close crossfire with Cold. Oh, I love this play. Does mean that you kind of can stack three heavily invested towards the outer sight rain for Pop. Nico for main, Kirby for Ivy. That's your inner setup. It's down deploying utility to try and draw attention there, but at the moment, they're happy to stand still. <clears throat> Kirby has such a good weapon for that job as well. He's about to be smoked off, so the idea that they could drop around the back lines is in play. But Nico with 40 seconds has Bolt. completely shut out the bomb, oh, so God. this is pretty difficult. Another Molotov coming in towards Pop from Rain. <gasps> nice. Oh, I thought he just galaxy brained them. Oh, so excited for that if he got both, but Sound has made it through. Nico's now unawares. Kierby, kind of irrelevant to that, wasn't able to keep eyes on it. And now a 2v3. They have to plant, though, and it's on Borup. If Kierby plays this right, he just has to knock that planter off his pegs. Planting now doesn't have the angle, so this gets awkward. Finds the first. Borup down, levels the playing field. Cole the door. does have the element of surprise in catching Tessus. Now Cadian to clutch. He's only got two francs. He could double that with this clutch. And Cold's the first target. Oh, baited, eliminated. Oof. It looked like once the bomb went down, it was going to get dicey, but Kirby handled that well. Had a couple of options there. Opted not to go for the aggressive one to play late round with Cold Zero. And his frag onto Borup is what allowed Cold Zero to go down the ladder there without eyes on. If Borup had lived, if he hadn't gone down, then the pot would have been watched and that would have been a heroic round. So the best one in a while here for heroic, and they're still unable to post it on the board. This was the play, look at this, down the ladder. <laughs> Sneaky beaky, as you like, and look at this. FaZe Clan, they're a different looking team right now. They are. I guess the same could be said for Heroic, because mm. <laughs> it's not the Heroic that we're used to seeing. But uh, with star performances from Nico coming out now, and, and let's be honest with everybody at home, as we do just have a little bit of a, a technical timeout coming on through, FaZe would have been the first to say that their performances uh, throughout the Pro League, it, it was pretty rubbish. You know, they weren't playing up to their standard, especially of the individuals in the server. Now with some positions being swapped around, things are looking good, and you can see the spree of rounds. Nine on the trot here, three more, and that'll be flawless from them after conceding the pistol. 140 ADR for Nico and 125 ADR for Broken. Sorry, Same as what? Mirage. Same as Mirage. Those two are at the top of the scoreboard, not the ADR, but the performers. Mm. It's good to see that those guys are working up on the right side of the bed. Well, uh, the money now is at a point for phase where they should be able to buy it for the remainder of the half here, assuming they don't have too many casualties in these following gun rounds. But Let's take a look because Heroic have got the buy back out. Kadian on the AWP. They had that plant, so residual cash coming on through uh, with the AKs. Oh, there was a chance there. Oh, oh yeah, he's in trouble. They found him. <laughs> They've also found Nico over there. So no quick kill to be coming in. But pressure mounting everywhere. This time they have at least drawn out the utility somewhat earlier. Smokes and Molotovs being filtered through by FaZe, having to maybe hinder some of this earlier attention to detail. They're going to go back to this setup again, FaZe Clan. So the idea here is with Brokey's position, if they throw the nade and they're not aware that this one could be in play, they tend to show their arm a little bit more. So, oh, hold up. Big nade, big kill, another opening. FaZe Clan are looking hot. Hot to trot. Kadian locked out again. He can't contest that. That's not a fight he wants to. Tessus, however... Relieving some pressure with another strange capitalization of Nico. Oh, Stown. Yeah, be catching Stown as they try and play chicken. Oh, called Zera roasted and Brokey in rotation might have a chance. Oh. Misses his shot. Nico does not. Kirby trying to save the day. Oh. What a spray. Gets them both. The org is really working for Kirby. Perhaps a new weapon for the job. And there's another opportunity now. Kadian gets the info, knows where both are. Has an AWP for the task, using the smoke to disappear. But there is a problem here, and that's that they're both pushing together. How is he supposed to get two kills with a bolt-action rifle? I don't really know. Neither does he. 
Good diligence, though, to spam that smoke. I thought they potentially would have lost him, but once they cleared out the low ramp train, they're aware he didn't get away. It was only one place he possibly could have been. And yeah, Kyobi with the save right there. He's going to actually pick up an AK. I assume he'll drop that across to Nico mm. and uh, buy back into the org. I think when he scoped in with the shaky aim, and I'm, I'm not meaning that in any disrespect, that's the way that it's Kyobi aims. Style, yeah. yeah, he has this shaky aim. So when he's He's obviously mastered it to some degree. It reminds me of an individual uh, called Pex, P-E-X, back from the uh, source days. I think he used to play with a team called Dynamic. They were North American, but he had shaky aim as well. Kyobi's is much more well-refined, but with the organ play, um, you see him being able to, to find a lot of impact. 14 kills for him, five deaths. The best we've seen him looking. Oh, is this quicker pressure towards me? No, okay. I was getting excited to see how Cold Zero deal with like a quick piece coming towards him. It's, it's just getting to see a new look yeah. with Cold Zero on it, which is a very, very tantalizing prospect. Now, for now, he doesn't have the support. You've just seen Brokey come over. So clearly feeling some pressure, feeling some presence, hearing a couple of steps here and there, indicating, okay, might need some help on this. And this looks like it is going to be a very dedicated B piece. So Kadian with the flash, Nico, Tessus ready to go, Brokey positioning well, but he might be caught in a bit of an awkward time, but this time Cold Zera. Oh, New position, same amount of damage. Nico and Tessus both take absolute batterings off it. And now it's just bore up a Nico. This has been a lovely hold again with the combination of Brokey leaving just uh, heroics Nico <laughs> alive. This is Jesus. a lovely, lovely shutdown. That is a very tough B site to crack. You see the fact that Cold was willing to hold a spray with such a tight line and he got double dinks from it? That's great control of his weapon there. Yikes, heroic. Really don't have any answers for yeah, this. Yeah, T-side lockout on train. We've seen a couple of these recently over, of course, the tail end of oh, yeah. ESL Pro <laughs> League. That's, that was uh, wild. It's been a recurring theme. I think we saw two 13 two halves back to back on train. Precisely, and I think Heroic, by not getting any of these opening kills, they're having such a rough go of it. Back into the last round of the first half here on train we go. Two AKs, Deagle, Galil, UMP, and back towards B appears to be the approach. So I think they're trying to keep these phase players from rotating yards, so Smokes flashes towards the bomb train. But guess what? Rain's in front of that. He's going to know there's no emergency. He's going to call that. And there's the lurk gone. Nice. Cold Zero's going to flash and have a look. There's two, though, pushing up the upper side. He's going to get caught out. Tessa's done well there. And that should be the bomb plan. This is the best chance we've seen in a while from Heroic. It's going to have to be a retooling. And they're using CT as their way back in. I like this. Everyone's got a kit. Full absence of control. Kirby flashed in. Oh, and he gets the shot. That's huge. A chance now for the phase boys on this retake. It falls to Stown and Borup. Stown needs timing on his side here to take that fight on the speedway. Oh, Kirby's holding it with the AWP. He's upgraded. And now Nico now falling to Borup's Deagle, running out of chances. They get the frag and they've got the time. That's quite the half. That's quite the posting. Phase making a statement here at the start of New York. It's a 12-3 half. And they've just got the T side to go.
Concentration stations, heroic with the stare down, Cadian looking down what looks to be a pretty dark and bleak corridor that is trained and it could very well be down and out shortly. 12-3, FaZe are looking fantastic on the half. Just need four rounds to finish this one off. Neat and tidy, I doubt it will be that way. Just a quick bit of a B stream update for everybody. We had OG versus Big going on the other B group game. And uh, with that, we did actually see OG pick up a 2-0 victory over Big Clan. The first map was Inferno. That was OG's picks. It was 19-15 over time. And then OG went on to Big's domain of Dust2. And they're actually able to pick that one up 16-9. So quite a big victory there for OG as they'll put themselves in the upper bracket. And they will face the winner of this game right here, which is looking very likely to be phased. The loser obviously facing Big. So it looks like we could be set for a heroic Big matchup and a phase OG game. We obviously have the Group A matches locked and loaded already. Oh, I'm excited for my early end, though, when Rush is going to come out, take the headset, and have oh, to yeah, explain yeah. himself, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess 99%. He That's did leave cool. 1%. Well, that was it. You know, he's not foolish. He's never going to go 100%. <laughs> never like, go full, Jason. He had to leave a 1% so cool. wow. margin. This is more than that, though. Clearly, FaZe have been unhappy with the recent performances. I have no idea, to be honest. Uh, I don't believe hard. so. It's still paused. Okay, it looked like Cold was talking quite intently there, so... No, it, they're not moving on. It looks like Kirby's concentrating, yeah. Okay, if you hand off the mouse for Nico, that confirms we aren't quite into it yet. Just looking at Nico's reflection there in the mirror, or in the mirror, in the windows, it looked like he is in a, in a high-up apartment. That's what I've been able to... That's your analysis, uh, is it? Yep, I've been so able bad. to take that away. Oh, dear, heroic. Those odds are uh, not very friendly to you whatsoever, but not that score line. All. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the, the, the trials and tribulations that the Seaside on train can face. I wonder if... There is any chance for Heroic if FaZe win this pistol. I do think that winning this pistol would be a fantastic way to, to speed run the final map. Indeed. That's the Ivy Smoke. Oh, deep one as well. Okay. Interesting. So that one's actually going to cover off very, very deep towards the sunny side. And they might use this to go fast to the backtracks. No one's actually watching the backtracks right now. It's just down on the bomb train. They've got another smoke for that as well. So now there is an unknowing. They look for the fight. Rain does dink him up oh, and finishes this. him off. And now they can go in a... Excuse me. Towards the outer site, Borup pushing out from E-Box, but he's getting shot in the back of the head. This oh, is love really this. nice. Now, this, this would be a Skybox. Yeah, still broken. Sorry, I know, guys. I know, but I'm just <laughs> saying you'd like this one. Man, I would love this one. The second smoke arriving on the, the uh, bomb tra old bomb. Yeah. Very nifty. The nerdiness with that. Like, I used to dream about pulling a strategy like that off. Uh, this is insane stuff from FaZe here. Could let it slip away, yeah. yeah. Oh, good shots. Rain revealed. Nico has that to deal with, but unfortunately with the kit, no armor, no time. Yeah, we're just doing the safety jiggles. Like the safety dance. It's done all the same. 13 to 3. That was cool. I like that. I might make a clip of that when is I get home. Is this the new phase we're getting to? No, it's the phase. Oh, is it too far? Too far. <laughs> I get excited. I get excited. I see Goodness me. He's doing nice this smokes. Is... I see position switches. I see this is new not... roles. Like, this is exciting. What this is, is Heroic feeling a little bit depressed about mm -hmm. things because in recent times, their name's been dragged through the mud and uh, they had a, a pretty bad loss to Astralis and things aren't, you know, super happy over there. They're also probably feeling a little bit burnt out. FaZe just had two weeks to prep and get everything going. So... Heroic are having what I'm going to call an off day. And uh, FaZe are having an on day. 
where they've uh, definitely turned it on and are looking very good. And some of those new looks, it's difficult to predict. You're going in against something unless, as you prefaced earlier, you've cracked against it. You have no idea. And these changes from FaZe, I'm happy with them. I think mm. they've made some good choices in, in the players they've moved around. It wasn't just Rain having to take the bitch rolls. They've actually thought about it and considered who might be good for where. And right now, Kadian with, a, with another struggling scoreline. I think it was the same or similar score, three kills, as he went into the second half of Mirage. So we're just having a hard day of it here at Heroic, and FaZe are making this look easy. Yeah, they absolutely are. This is supposed to be Heroic's map pick, and with the pistol one, the AKs and the Galil in play, only as scouts and SMGs to keep you company. Feels like it could be 14 imminent, but gonna have to see that one manifest though. IV the finish. Three CTs prepared for this, a very passive hold. I mean, look at what Tessis is holding. That's that's their backtracks hold. <laughs> that's their IV hold if they slip the net of Gadian Scout, which is a foreseeable problem. But they're actually swinging this way. Interesting. So it's a good chance and a good shot from Gadian. A chance for a second as well. Brokey finding one, but Gold Zara immediately out of main, using that ladder to draw more shots and forcing the reload out of Stown. When the repeak reigns ready. Borup and Nico with just Deagles are going to be doing their very best to close the gaps. Kiyobi spotting and confirming that there is still one there. He's going to commit to the plant now. He has some support and Rain there to keep him at bay. That's the end of that. 14 phase. Oh, wow. Been touching distance now. Yeah, and what's crazy is because phase played that so late round, you know, sometimes we see teams go for the anti ecos and they're a little bit quicker. And as soon as they win that bomb site over, they will save. But because that was so late round, Heroic thought, well, we may as well have a crack. We may as well see if we can stop this plant, if we can stop them from taking uh, this yarn control. And by doing so, they lost everything. And look at this. This is a tilt situation for Heroic right now. The chips are so far down that they're doing back to back CT side advice. Right? Oh. Obviously, they would be giving away round number 15 otherwise but at this point it's an all-in so they don't want to play against overtime the entire time they want to try and turn it around right now and let's see what they've got so first challenger to this will be called Zara <laughs> joined by Nico beside him so who, who moves first statues now. <laughs> but Nico with the flash, probably ready to throw as soon as Kadian takes contact, or the There's sound cue. One of the two. There's a bit of util. There's the flash. Blind, but Nico isn't. <laughs> oh, baby, this is too good. He's reading it all. Nico does go down to Stown, but they've got to know Cold Zero. Was it? Yeah, that's a perfect summary oh. of Heroic's half. Jeez, man. In fact, he gets two there. How does Nico get Full two? Wipe. Full wipe. Brokey's got another. It looks like 15's a lock-in. Tessus just with the Desert Eagle, giving it his best shot. <sighs> Very, I mean, it is just a, you know, a perfect example of when everything's going right. It looks great. So, so you guys at home get to see what a $1,900 force buy looks like, what a $2,400 force buy looks like, and now what a $2,900 force buy looks like. Fun. Uh, they're all very similar, let me tell you. <laughs> you won't be seeing too many rifles come out to play here. Scouts, SMGs, and then it's just utility that will go up. And uh, yeah, it's a horrible day at the office. So I said that this is the worst streak of maps lost for Heroic with this five man. Well, it's going to go up one extra map. There's going to be three series on the trot that they've now lost. Na'Vi, Astralis, and now FaZe. And six maps in a row, all have been 2-0 losses. Yeah, and I think some of the context to that loss previous to Astralis is definitely going to sting. That's uh, one that you don't forget. Now, back into this game, though. Phase one away, and they've looked good. I think you're right. It is that balance between the two. Yes, there's been good additions to what Phase are doing, but Heroic are looking like a shadow of their former selves here. Kadian quiet. We don't see him yelling, you know roaring his team forward. I don't want to make any excuses for them, but I'd be uh, feeling a little bit out of juice considering just been, the events. They've been gaming. They, yeah, and not only that, before that, before we had these ESL events back to back, they were playing in DreamHack events as well in the final against Big. Yeah. It's been non-stop for them, and there's still a chance for them to turn it around. There is the lower bracket, but they're a man down here. Round 19, FaZe are looking to take this 16 to three. The FaZe name and New York it has gone hand in hand before. Almost synonymous with success, but we didn't expect it here today. I think none of us did. No one predicted. No phase. one, and I, I think it's a very fair point. It's why we're so surprised and enjoying what we're seeing. But there it is, comfortable, even though it's meant to be a little bit trickier. Kill by kill, it comes in, and now just one away. Nico 
against the real Nico now. Rain to shut it down. 16 to 3. Phase reminding us of who they once were.